So welcome to today's video. We've talked about Newton's method recently, and today I'd like to show you two brief examples to see how Newton's method works or maybe doesn't work in practice. Um, again, I've implemented some Python code to make the computations a little quicker. Um, you don't have to understand all of the code, but I think it should be pretty obvious what the main lines do. I'll explain those as we go along, okay? Um, so here's a very simple function first. Let's just load a few modules that we'll need. This is the function that we are going to look at. Um, so f is a function from r2 to r, and it's defined as x1 minus 2 squared plus 2, x2 plus 1 squared plus 1. So a simple quadratic function. I computed the gradient for you, and I also computed the Hessian for you. And for the code, what we're going to do is we are going to implement Python versions that compute a function value given x1, x2 is the input, the gradient, and the Hessian. Okay, you don't really have to know how these work in detail. Now, just some preparations for the plots. So we're basically um, defining a range for x1 and x2 for our plot. And then here we actually do the plotting, so we define the x3 coordinate as f of x1, x2 for the grid that we just defined. Um, and we're doing a surface plot. So this is how that function looks like. And you can see that's a nice quadratic function. Um, we would suspect there is a minimum somewhere in that area. Um, and if we look at the code actually, so at, at the function definition, sorry, um, you can actually see that this first term will be zero when x1 is two, and that second term will be zero when x2 is minus one, and that's, as these are both non-negative, that's the lowest value that we can achieve um, for a function value of one. So two at minus one, that should be the, the minimum of that function. Okay, and if we look at that, sorry, two, and minus one that is about here. So that looks like the minimum in this surface plot. To make this a little clearer, let's have a look at the level sets. So here's a few of those level sets. And you can clearly see, um, those are um, parabolic function here that somehow zooms in on that point, two minus one. Right, so that is clearly the minimum here. Okay, let's do a Newton step to see if we can actually compute that using Newton's method. We'll start with evaluating the function at um, an arbitrary starting point. I just I chose a minus two and two here, but you can choose whatever you want. Value here is 35. So let's have a look at that in uh, the plot as well. So here the orange point, that is our starting point. The blue one is the minimum that we want to get to. So let's compute a Newton step. We need to compute the negative gradient for that. That is eight and minus 12. And we need to compute the Hessian, that is this matrix here, two, zero, zero, four. Um, in this example, the Hessian is constant. So nothing unexpected should happen here. And now we just solve Newton's equation. And remember Newton's equation is the Hessian times V times the step that we want to take e is equal to minus the gradient at the point. Um, so this is what this function here does. And P is for NumPy, that's a collection of numerical mathematical functions. Um, and it has a module that's called linear algebra, linalg and there is a function to solve linear equations. So what this does, it solves the linear equation with this, this matrix here, that's the Hessian, and this right-hand side minus the gradient and stores the result as the vector V. So if we compute that, we get four and minus three. So that's the Newton step, four and minus three. Um, so if we do that, the next X1, this is uh, minus two, two, plus four minus three, we will get two minus one as the next point. And uh, can have a look at that. 
in our plot here. So this is the Newton step that we are taking. And you can see we are exactly landing on the minimum. And of course, that is not a big surprise if you think about it, because what Newton's method does is um, it approximates the function locally by a function of degree two. Now, the function that we have here, remember, uh, here it is, that is a function of degree two. So what happens if you approximate a function of degree two by a function of degree two? Well, you get exactly that function back. So the approximation in Newton's method is exact. And as Newton's method then computes the minimizer of that approximation, what we get is precisely the minimum of that function. So unsurprisingly, for a quadratic function, Newton's method computes the minimum in one step. Now, um, as a counterexample, let's have a look at a more involved function here. So I choose a function of degree four. So this one here, x1 minus two to the fourth. Then there is x2 minus one to the fourth. And there's a mixed term as well. Um, I am adding two x1 plus one squared times x2 plus one squared. So again, degree four. Okay, I computed the gradient and the Hessian for you, and you can see the Hessian is no longer constant. So things are getting a little more complicated now. Um, and again, we are defining Python versions of that function. So those just evaluate, given an input x1, x2, let's just evaluate the values for f for the gradient and for the Hessian, so we can use that for the computations. Um, again, we're plotting the function, a slightly different range this time because the function really grows quickly, as you can see here. Yeah, so even for that reduced range from minus three to three here, where you get values um, higher than 800. But you can see there seems to be at least one minimum in that general range here. Um, and that becomes a little more apparent if we're trying to do a contour plot. So these are some contours here, and you can see it kind of seems to zoom in on that point here. Yeah, somewhere here there should be a minimum. We don't know the exact minimum, it's not that easy to evaluate maybe, but uh, there should be a local minimum here. So let's see what happens if we start um, with Newton's algorithm. We're going to use one zero as a starting point, yeah, because we suspect the optimum should be somewhere here, and that seems to be the closest all integer point. Okay, so we just use that. Um, so this orange point, this is our starting point. Doesn't seem to be far away from the optimum, so we should hope to get there quickly. Now what happens? The function value here is 11, that's not bad. Gradient is 412, Hessian is this here. Um, and now I implemented um, a Python version of Newton's algorithm here. So we're starting with a point P10. And what this algorithm does, again, um, it just solves Newton's equation for the current point. So star P of k is the current point. Um, it does so while the norm of the gradient is higher than this value here, and it does at most 100 iterations. Uh, and if it uh, finds a solution here, it just appends the new point um, as old point plus the step V that it found, it increases the counter and prints out the new point. That's what the script does here. Okay, so let's, let's have that run. Um, and you can see the first new point, minus 1.25 and 2. Minus 1.25 and 2, that is somewhere up here. So that's pretty far away from where we started. Um, that doesn't seem good. And actually is, isn't, right? So um, here again, we, we jump around quite a bit. And if we scroll somewhere to the end of that list, actually we we do get 100 points here. So um, the algorithm doesn't terminate because the gradient is low. It terminates because uh, it reaches that 100 point limit. 
um, 1.24 basically and minus 1, one minus 0 0.6 uh, that's still far away from the point we suspected right um, and let's, let's enter that just to see 1.2 and minus dollar 6 like this so the function value here is 9 um, and remember we started with let's see we started with 11 so we're a little below what we started with um, but uh, if you look at the gradient now that's still far away from zero right um, and what happens here is mainly due to that hessian here you can have a look at that now what you can see here is um, there's a 16 here in this upper left entry and if you compute the determinant of that this is 16 times 12 minus 16 times 16 so that's clearly a negative number now problem obviously with this determinant here uh, it's not positive to finite so the quadratic approximation that you compute in that first step um, that we then want to use as a minimizer um, that actually maximizes the value locally and that is what's going wrong here so we're jumping around minimizing maximizing yeah that's the problem the local approximation here is the wrong way instead of a parabola that's turned like this you get a parabola that's turned like this and you compute a local maximum of that instead of the desired local minimum um, and that's why it doesn't work okay so you somehow have to safeguard against problems of this kind if you're using Newton's algorithm um, and there are extensions of the algorithm that can do these safeguarding mechanisms but we are not going to go into these topics a little more yeah suffice to say um, Newton's algorithm and also gradient descent are not guaranteed to yield a result that is somewhere near a local optimum or in any way usable so both can fail miserably um, and that's just something that you have to keep in mind always be critical about your results and if the algorithms don't seem to work um, there are more involved algorithms that can help but if you're encountering a problem like this um, your best bet is probably to consult a mathematician um, who is well versed in this area of expertise and you can help you with an algorithm that is tailored to your specific situation okay so much about uh, this example of newton's algorithm i'll see you in the next videos bye